So I was kind of dreading this episode, mainly because whenever John or Sam come on screen normally, all I can do is imagine things that I'd rather be doing, like, I don't know, getting my eyes gouged out by a seven foot man. On the whole, I was pleasantly surprised by the episode, but as always, there were so many times where I just thought, well, this situation is logically flawed. Like, when a giant is opening the gate and then just lets it fall behind him, it doesn't hold it open for any of the wildlings. Or when it's charging at the Night's Watch members, and then all they can do is just chant their little song. Like, surely there are more productive things you could be doing with your time right now. And then at the end, when Jon Snow leaves, it's a really massive, like, plan that he has. But he doesn't tell anyone. Sam talks to him while he's leaving. That's the only way that he finds out. Um, Jon Snow doesn't take ghosts with him. He doesn't take a horse. He doesn't take any supplies or food that I can see. And he gives away his sword. I just feel like, what? Why would you? Why would you give away supplies when you're making a journey like that? Um, and then this little kid's getting a lot of heat for killing Egret. Um, and to, in all fairness, she did kill his dad. Potatoes. Like I just kept imagining um, when Jon Snow was holding her on the ground that he would just like loose another arrow into her head or something. And like the way he just nods afterwards, like, "What's up? I kill your bitch." And I don't know if it was just me, but there were just so many times where I thought one of the extras was Jon Snow and I just thought, oh, look, that's Jon Snow being killed in the background. Surely it's important that you show me this information. I really did enjoy the character development this episode. Like, you see Sam um, just man up and start fighting, killing people. You see Jon Snow finally become a leader in the Night's Watch. Um, I really enjoyed it. I am upset that it took four seasons for us to get here when the character arc was pretty straightforward. Having said that, I didn't actually care about them that much. Like when Gilly said that thing to Sam, like, oh, please don't die, or whatever. It was such a strong echo of Valeria Sam saying to Oberyn, don't leave me all alone in this world, but I just cared so much less. I thought Maester Aemon's story had the potential to be really interesting. Um, I kind of wish that he hadn't told us that he was a Targaryen in season one, just so that we could find out now, because I feel like it would have upped the ante for the fight. Um, and I was also hoping that the girl he was talking about would be someone that we know. Like, I was kind of hoping it would be Olenna because of that thing that she said ages ago about, oh, uh, I was supposed to be married to a Targaryen, blah blah blah. Um, but then it didn't really lead anywhere, it was just Sam asking about sex. There was literally so much suspense where Janice Slint went down um, to hide where Gilly was hiding. And it wasn't so much because I liked Gilly, but because I really don't like Janice Slint. And I'm just thinking, oh, well, if you kill a newborn baby and a woman, so that you can hide during a battle. Literally, like, what are you doing? Um, but that didn't happen, and I was glad that it didn't happen, but I also felt like it was a lot of wasted tension because that storyline didn't really go anywhere. So overall, I give this episode a 7 out of 10. And it's just because when I heard that they were spending their entire CGI budget on it, I was really hyped up for it, and it just didn't live up to my expectations. Um, what I actually thought was going to happen was that the dead people during the fight were just going to rise up as White Walkers, and it was going to be like a three-way battle. But that didn't happen, so there's always next week. I'll see you then.